Hi everybody, this is Chris from Redshift and I wanted to give you a quick uh, once over of the Kony Sport Shock that is on the rear of the Honda Civic. Um, the reason I wanted to mention it is because the Kony Sport Shock, um, as you receive it, does not include a bump stop or a dust boot. Um, the dust boot is this plastic piece, this is a stock Honda Shock, um, and underneath this inside here is the bump stop. So I want to show you what you have to do to, you actually, Kony requires you take this off, the, uh, the dust boot and the bump stop, and move it over to the Kony shop. Um, so what you have to do is, on the, the reason this is a little bit difficult, you have to drill out two things. One is, this little sleeve here, this doesn't come off. It's held in place by this little dimple, this little peen thing. They come in with something and go, Pow! and so the inside of the sleeve has a, uh, ex, um, protrusion on it and so this doesn't come off and so what you have to do is you have to drill that little circle out and try not to you know go crazy and drill through the the piston um, if you want to save this shock for later you can it's very easy all you have to do is you drill out uh, drill it you know if you nick this a little bit it's not a big deal um, and then when it's drilled out you pick this up if you can see there's a little bit of space there you put, uh, um, you can usually fit by that point because you can pull it up a little bit more, a box wrench or something under there and you can actually pry upward on it and boom, this comes right off. The way I do it actually is I put it in a vise this way, I clamp it so that I'm clamping that upward, I drill the top out and then I hit this with a hammer, boom, and it comes right out and that's how, this takes me about 30 seconds to do. Be careful because this is a, um, a um, hard steel and so if you go, try to go too fast you will dull your bit and you won't be able to get through it. What to do is go slowly, use some oil, try not to make too much smoke because smoke means heat and heat is your enemy when you're going through steel or anything. So um, once that's off uh, this wash, this black washer comes off, the dust boot comes off there's another silver washer underneath this that sometimes you have to tap off with a little hammer and then there's the bump stop underneath that. Okay, so, and I, I, I'm not going to take this off right now, but assuming this is taken off, this piston, this uh, shaft here on the stock shock is actually smaller than the Kony shaft. So Kony has you drill this out, uh, drill this out with a uh, 12 millimeter bit but also 12 millimeters is almost identical to a half inch, very close. So if you don't have metric drills, like most people don't, just drill it out with a half inch drill bit, you're fine. Um, you drill that out, and after you've drilled that out, um, I'll show you the sequence of how you put everything back together on the Kony shock, okay? Um, the Kony shock is... Uh, um, well, fantastic shock, but uh, when, I, when I was doing this before, I used this, <laughs> I used this uh, to show the bump stop. So the first thing you put on is the bump stop. And after the bump stop is on, it's a little tough to get the bump stop over this little welded nut up here, but the bump stop goes on first and will sit right on the shock down on the bottom. Not there. You won't have electrical tape down there. It'll be a bump stop. Um, the second thing you have is a thicker smaller diameter washer. That thicker, smaller diameter washer goes on first. Um, the next thing that goes on is the dust boot. So between the smaller diameter washer and the larger diameter washer is the dust boot. So that's actually sitting in place there. Then the larger diameter washer goes on top of that. After the larger diameter washer then goes your, your bushing. And inside the bushing is the um, the little sleeve. Now, when you took, when you drilled this sleeve off, um, the stock sleeve, um, you've removed part of, you know, what you need there. So what Kony does is they send you the same sleeve, but it's a 12 millimeter sleeve that goes over the 12 millimeter sh uh, piston shaft. And so the stock bushing still goes on that same piece. Goes on there, so you have 
bump stop, smaller diameter thick washer, then the dust boot, then the larger diameter thin washer, then the bushing with the little inner, inner sleeve race. And always note that there are two bushings, and these two bushings these rubber bushings always go with the larger side toward the body of the car. Um, so there's two of these and they sit, you know, you put the first one like this with the larger side up and you, then you install it on the car when you're sitting at the back fender. You install it on the car and when you install it on the car, there's another bushing just like this which you'll take and you'll put from the inside the trunk. It won't have that sleeve on it, but that bushing will go in place right here. The larger side toward the car and again on this side the larger side toward the car. And then after that there is a dished washer that goes on top of that uh, the second bushing from in the trunk. There's a split lock washer and a nut. And that split lock washer, I'm sorry, the, uh, the dished washer goes um, facing upward as if it would hold milk uh, installed on the car and torque that down. The torque spec off from Coney is 37 foot pounds. What to do is you um, use a 10 millimeter socket to hold this, uh, and you use, and the, on that 10 millimeter socket is a torque wrench. Set it for 37 foot pounds, and then you use a box wrench to turn this. As you turn this, once this gets to 37 foot pounds, the thing you're holding it with will click. That's how you that's how you do the install. So Coney uh, Coney dampers are fantastic. Um, the adjustment is rebound only, which is really important. And you know all these guys out there say eight way adjustable, sixteen way adjustable, you know thirty two way adjustable, and all that. And it's all it's all sort of funny because you, it could be five hundred way adjustable. All it means is that it clicks five hundred times. Um, this is um, there's no clicks on this. When you put the uh, when you put the the adjuster on top, all you do is you spin it, and it sweeps. There's no clicks, uh, which kind of makes this infinitely adjustable, which is way better than 36-way adjustable. And um, and uh, the way people talk about how to adjust conies is they talk about it in terms of number of turns from full soft or full firm. So if you're at full soft, and I'll go to full soft, um, I might say, or somebody might say, yeah, you want to be one turn from full soft. So you go to full soft, and then you go half turn, half turn. That's how you do the adjustment for the conies. Um, also, one quick thing that I learned is uh, it's always good when you go full soft to go full soft and then turn it a couple degrees off. It's better not to be right on the lock, um, right on the stop. Same thing with full firm. It's about two and a half full rotations to full firm. If you want to go to full firm, back it off a back it off a just a sorry a degree or two. That looked like more than it was supposed to be. Just pull it off the stop um, so you don't have any jam issues down the road and. I think that's it. Great damper, uh, in my opinion, the best damper um, value of anything out there. And you know, I'm a dealer for a lot of different things, uh, and these are just fantastic. And so it's not that I'm biased that I, you know, am a, you know, a Coney dealer and I make money, you know, a lot of money off this. It's not that at all. It's that these really, really work well. And there's not a damper out there that does it as well as this. Um, with the adjustment being rebound only, you can turn that up and it won't change the way it absorbs bumps. Um, so it's still relatively comfy even if you jack up the spring rates and all you're doing is adjusting the rebound damping so that it controls the higher spring rate and you don't go bouncing down the road. Great shock. Okay, well I hope that helps and if you ever have any questions, I'll, as I always say, please give a call or um, email and uh, I'll get back to you quickly.